Our next speaker made the trip up to Pittsburgh from sunny Jacksonville, and I was, quite honestly was a little upset when I woke up Saturday morning and saw snow on the ground because I thought he's probably going to bail on me because he's he's got better plans in, down south. But he uh, he was able to make it up here yesterday, and he's currently the senior client director for uh, large value-added reseller that Pass, as well as our clients, have had the pleasure of working with and having a lot of success um, working with our clients. He's got a 15 plus year history of working in the retail, entertainment, media space, delivering solutions and uh, value to his clients. And really excited for him to come up and share the benefits of leveraging a value added reseller, the ways that I think a lot of our clients and clients in the market aren't, and getting the, the full support of them to deliver to the bottom line. So. Uh, please give it up for our next guest, Mr. Michael Kennedy. That's fine. Hopefully this is on and you guys can hear me. Um, first off, thank you, Pass and, uh, and Rourke for the, the opportunity today. Um, very excited to be here. When Justin asked me to speak, I, I kind of thought, okay, I could get up here and give an insight, insight spiel, but everybody's probably heard that. Um, I think the, the biggest value that I wanted to impart is, okay, what value can we, can we find for VARs and how do we potentially unlock that? How do we best work with our account executive? Who is that person? And kind of what's the mindset of, of your sellers that you work with? Um, I think it's, it's kind of a, a unique opportunity. Um, <clears throat> little background on myself, uh, as Justin mentioned, I've been in the, the, the reseller industry for about 15 years, maybe a little less. Uh, started out inside sales, pounding phones, cold calls. You, you all have, have probably received those uh, previously. Uh, built up, I'm, I'm now a, a global client executive uh, working with a, a few major clients um, of ours. I think a lot of what I'll speak about today is differentiation on that, that account executive side and, and really how to potentially unlock that. So when I think about um, my interaction with clients and how we, we look at delivering value, you know, I always like to define value. Um, we'll take a look at perceptions of a VAR, strategic value of a VAR, kind of true meaning a partnership, and then really unlocking that. So when we, we think about value, um, you know, if you Google it, if you check it out, there's four or five different um, definitions, we'll say. Um, if I were to ask the, the room, you know, what does value mean to you? Uh, I'd probably get 40 to 50 different, different responses. Um, when I think about value, I, I think it means different things to different people at different points in time. Um, and it's my job as an account executive to, to kind of figure out that, that out, right? Different situations, different groups, procurement, IT, the business, everybody's gonna look at things differently and find you know, different areas they, they need me to help in. Um, perceptions of VAR, um, you know, quite frankly, we, we tend to sell water. We, we do not make products Cisco's, the Microsoft's, the HP's, the Apple's, everything you buy, uh, we don't make it, right? We, we sell water made by 6,000 other brands, but where a lot of uh, what we deliver is around the wrapper. So, um, you know, the, sorry. Um, I'm losing my train of thought here. Um, so think IP, think how do I get product uh, from one point to another? How do I handle supply chain mitigation? Um, how do I you know, handle deployments? How do I increase my time to market of delivery um, of installs? How do I help reach my clients better? How do I utilize data um, to better understand both my business, my clients, and ultimately uh, improve my operations. Sorry, I'm way off here. <sighs> Strategic value of VAR. Um, this is really just a, a few key points that
that I had put down, um, you know, driving cost efficiencies. Um, when we when we think about sourcing from from different partners, um, you know, there's a lot of information. Justin had touched upon, uh, Bert had touched upon benchmarking data. Um, we have access to all of our client data, so we'll we'll help put that together. Um, you know, run an analysis, make sure we're we're helping you get the best deal. Uh, negotiation strategies, I I would say, is a, a big one um, for me. You know, it's we understand our OEM partners, we understand their drivers, we understand you know their comp structures. We've built relationships with these folks, and we can help you know advise and guide our clients. Uh, to negotiate better deals. Um, creative deal structures. Um, I think this is a, a pretty important one. Um, you know, sometimes, I tend to see myself sometimes as a, a divorce mediator, per se. Um, you know, it's, it's really trying to get both sides to come together, an OEM and a, a, a client. Uh, I'll give you one example under a, a creative deal structure perspective where um, the OEM, the supplier, was had a, a series funding uh, round coming up. They really wanted to look at a bigger deal. Um, they wanted to try and put together a package that the client would be interested in. Uh, the client was going down their, their standard one year uh, proposal structure, renewal structure, we were able to come together. Um, you know, we ended up doing a three-year deal, saved the client about 25% year over year. Uh, we were able to also structure annual payments for them um, that allowed them to, to continue on with their budget cycles, but it also allowed the, uh, the, the OEM to recognize the deal up front. Um, I think the, the key to that is, you know, have those conversations with your 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 reseller partners. Um, you know, talk to them about your challenges. Um, really, just communicate. At the end of the day, um, I think. <clears throat> sorry, I'm way off here. Uh, we will. Um, to me, true meaning of partnership is um, I need to invest in the time to understand your business. Um, I need to understand your ideal outcomes. I need to understand the, the situation, right? What is the ask? What is going on? Um, I need to sell outside to align against your goals. What's that mean? Building consensus across the board, both within my organization, building consensus with maybe the OEM partners and or folks within your organization that, that need to help or be involved in a, a project or an opportunity. Um, I also say I, I need to, to own and control the 98%. When I think about the 98%, the 2% the that I can't control is the PO, it's the purchase. That's all on you. The 98% that I can control, that is the aligning of resources, um, you know, the research, the communication, the project management, everything leading up to that sale, I can control. I, I can't control where you guys uh, decide to do your business with. Um, the one ask, literally from our side, is if I invest in you, <clears throat> I need you to communicate and invest in our partnership. Um, you know, I think really, we've, I imagine you all have been there, right? You, uh, you sit through a number of meetings where the introduction is, we're the best, we're the greatest, we do everything, we have the best people. Um, where I think the, the differentiation is and where you can unlock a lot of that strategic value of your, your partners is in that communication, right? Find, find, a, find a vendor, find a rep, find a person who's willing to make these investments on your behalf, and I think you'll, you'll start to see and realize, hey, 
maybe there are some things I didn't think about. Maybe there's you know some additional value adds that I didn't know that they had. And now, how do I leverage that, right? How do I maybe, instead of spending on, on deployment costs or proof of concept costs, can my vendor help me leverage POC funding? Can they help me leverage deployment funding? What is out there that, that can really help me as a company, help me as a buyer, help me as a stakeholder? Um, so I think unlocking potential in, in, in your relationships. Um, you know, hopefully today, you're speaking with Insight, doing business with Insight, um, but if not, right, challenge your current reseller partners. Um, I think the, the best relationships I have that we've had in place for a number of years um, really comes through communication. Um, you know, it, I would say my, my best relationship in the industry came from them challenging me. Um, you know, hey, Michael, I'm facing this challenge. This is what I need to accomplish. How do we come together? Um, quite frankly, it, it, was a, it was a budget challenge. Um, you know, they had not properly budgeted for a software renewal. Um, that renewal had gone up, not substantially. They had challenges with the OEM and pushing that back down to where they need it from a budget standpoint. And, uh, you know, the biggest key there is communication where they said, hey, this is my budget, this is what I need to hit. Um, you know, we, we got creative, I would employ, uh, say, on that opportunity, what we did was pulled in a, a few different OEMs. Um, you know, being a reseller, we're lucky that we don't, we don't get paid on selling one product, right? We sell everything, so leverage that. Um, you know, put together different deals, maybe it's share shift from other vendor partners or OEMs. Um, you know, most, most VARs are, are willing to work with you and understand, hey, what challenges do you have and, and how do we creatively solve them? Um, share goals. I know a lot of my clients, I know what their spend reduction goals are for the year. Um, a lot of my IT contacts, I know what their projects are for the year, um, and I know what they need to achieve. So having myself know that, communicating, having that, that joint kind of success motion, we'll say, um, really helps me align my internal resources, advocate, and eventually deliver you know, a, a solid customer experience and, and help my partners on the client side achieve their goals. Um, I'd say find an account executive who is willing to listen, understand, and uh, really learn and advocate. Um, you know, I've seen it throughout my career where some reps love to get on the phone, they love to pitch, they don't listen, right? Um, I'm sure you, you all have been there, you've heard it, where they speak and then the immediate question is, great, what's our next steps, what do we do, what do you wanna buy? Um, I, for me, that's, that's not really a, a true partnership. Um, I think the, the biggest skill from any account executive or seller is the ability to listen and learn. Um, I think that is, is definitely number one. So I would say, look at your vendors, find an ability, uh, find someone who is willing to listen, to learn, and, and create shared goals. Um, and then, again, communicate, right? IT, the value curve, value meaning different things to different people at different times, constant communication, right? That value curve is gonna change throughout the, uh, a, a project, an opportunity, a cycle. Keeping your rep apprised to, hey, this is what we need to achieve, or hey, there's a project change, how do you help me manage this? Really helps them um, you know, work towards those, those co-joint uh, goals, if you will. Um, so shameless plug, a little bit about insight. Uh, maybe a little more comfortable talking through this one. But um, 
insight. We are a, uh, a global IT uh, provider and solutions integrator. Uh, we're driving transformation and modernization through, uh, through intimate understanding of, of client needs. Um, you know, I am quite biased working for Insight. There are a number of great companies and, and partners out there. Um, but overall, we're, we're about 12,000 people strong. Um, we are a global company working with over 6,000 um, manufacturing partners, providers. Uh, we've de delivered over 4,000 projects last year. Um, everything from you know, simple installs up through complex uh, cloud migrations and, and hybrid data centers. Um, the, the biggest thing I would say from an insight perspective working for a number of other VARs throughout my career is our investment and our commitment to our consultants, our architects, and our engineers. Um, just the, the sheer volume of being a quote unquote sales company, but having uh, one third of our employees focused on the solutions standpoint, um, I believe really is a testament to our, our investment, to our clients and our clients' success. Um, as you see, we've, we've number, won a, a number of awards up there, um, but I think, you know, as I said in the beginning, our focus, my focus, a good rep's focus should always be on you and your business and what, what your outcomes need to be versus, you know, hey, I need to, uh, I need to sell some products. So what's the, the flavor of the day? Let me shoot you that email. Um, you know, it, it all starts with communication. Um, you know, I've, I've interacted with a, a number of folks, both in IT and in procurement, and they're always sometimes afraid to share information, right? You think, hey, my vendor's gonna price gouge me, or, you know, I won't see as much value as I should, or the cost savings won't be there. Um, I, I would say communicate. Uh, find that great bar and really have those conversations, right? Have planning sessions, ensure uh, they're aligned to your, your strategic goals and um, yeah. <laughs> That's all I have, I'm sorry. This, this is my first keynote, so <laughs> I'm a little nervous. I appreciate y'all sticking, sticking with me. Go ahead, Justin. Yeah, I think, I think throughout the years, VARs, resellers, uh, kind of have a bad rap, right? There's, there's a lot of great account executives out there, and there's a lot of really bad account executives. Um, you know, I've, I've sat through meetings where literally the only questions are, hey, what are you buying today, and can I send you a competitive quote, right? Great, maybe they go dirt cheap, but they're, that type of person's looking for, you know, an individual sale. Um, I think all of us work for great companies. There's a lot of great resellers and bars out there who do a lot of really, really cool things. I think at the end of the day, it comes down to your account executive and the team that you're engaged and you're working with who can really help you unlock, you know, that value, that strategic um, kind of partnership, if you will. To, to your question, I mean, one, find that person. If you're not happy with the company, you're not happy with the rep, you know, request someone else, advocate for yourself. Um, when you look at RFIs or relationships or RFPs, RFXs, um, you know, be clear as much as you can. If you need help or protection, put NDAs in place. You know, uh, I can't tell you the, the number of times where 
we've had to respond to some type of RFX where maybe we only have 50% of the information, right? And it's very tough to respond or build a solution or provide, you know, that business outcome or plan against that business outcome when we don't have the full picture. And I think that's that's probably a challenge from our side and I get it, you know, from a client side where, hey, we don't want to give them too much information or we can't or we're concern, concerned about, um, you know, kind of legal protection around our, our NDAs if we don't have one in place. You know, I, I just think communication and having clear pictures allows, you know, your reseller, your VAR to truly put together a great solution that, that enables and helps your business. Because at the end of the day, right, uh, I don't see myself as a seller. I know a lot of my peers don't see themselves as sellers. We, we truly like love to help. Um, and we, we, there's a lot of us who want to know and understand your business inside and out so that we can kind of proactively come to you and say, hey, we have this idea, we understand this is going on in the industry or within your business. You know, what's your thoughts around here, right? I think this could really help improve X, Y, Z, whatever it may be. Yep, for sure. Um, I mean, there there are a number of uh, diverse suppliers from a uh, tier one diversity spend perspective in the industry. Um, we at Insight, we are not. We are a, a publicly traded company, so tier one diversity spend is a, a challenge for us. Um, a number of our clients are also looking at tier two diversity spend initiatives, right, which is something that um, Insight can help with. Um, we are, I would say, I am most impressed with Insight with our internal investments into our corporate culture, um, the enablement of our people in the education and kind of shared experiences that, you know, us as corporate employees are, are being exposed to. Um, I think that that goes a long way, right? Um, but we are diversifying our supply chain to look at more diversity spend, right? And that allows us to flow um, some of that spend recognition to our clients via that tier two. Um, we also, Insight owns 49% of an entity, uh, another reseller, OnPoint ITS, who is a woman-owned business, certified woman-owned business. Yeah, I mean, we, we have a lot of different tools and capabilities within our, uh, our, 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 our skill sets, if you will. Um, you know, our insight.com portal is uh, probably what you're, you're referring to. Um, so we, we have the ability to set up clients, establish standards, um, deploy that out, control uh, maybe approval hierarchies, um, self-reporting, we have, I think, over 30 reports at this point. That's all self-service. Um, we have some, some analytics dashboard capabilities coming out um, from a renewals and warranty management standpoint. Um, once we process orders, we ingest that data. Uh, we then push that out via our r and uh, dashboard. So that at any point in time, we have access, clients have access to all of your renewals and your warranties for budget planning, what's coming at next quarter, what do I need to hit. Um, maybe via that we see, we start to see trends and say, hey, okay, we're seeing, you know, Red Hat, for example, purchased in January, March, July, 
August, is there an opportunity to look at that, aggregate and co-term everything under one contract, and maybe now we can you know, negotiate a, a better, better cost basis because it's all tied together. Um, does that help? Sorry, Jason. <laughs> Great question. Um, we are, we're partnering with clients to understand, uh, better understand their standards and their, their future rollout plans. Um, Insight, we have a number of uh, warehouses and lab facilities where we will run certain programs. Um, we have a client-owned inventory program. We also have a client-reserved inventory program. So we will proactively bring inventory standards based on your needs, forecast information, et cetera, into our warehouse. We will sit on that. Um, we can either invoice at time of ingest when we receive the equipment or invoice at time of shipment of, of equipment. Um, so we've been proactively working with a lot of our clients to get ahead of that and say, okay, you know, maybe this specific laptop has a four to six week lead time. What do you need within that range? What's your, your yearly plan look like? And let's proactively bring that in, manage that inventory process for you so that when you need equipment based on that forecast, we can ship it out and you have it and you're not trying to play this game of, hey, let me cut a PO eight weeks ahead of time and hopefully I get it at that point in time. Great question. Um, yes, I have. Um, we are now starting to enforce signature um, on shipments to homes, apartments, etc. cetera. Um, we have seen kind of an uptick in theft and or misdelivered packages. Um, say for instance, it's left outside of a house or if it's an apartment building, um, you know, left in a mail room, and it's unsecure. Um, so because of that, you know, we've been enforcing signatures for delivery. Um, there might be a, a delay if someone's not home, but again, at least the, the equipment is secure, it's delivered. We know that, you know, again, if something is stolen, we've, we've kind of eat that cost and, and taking care of it, eight week lead time, and if it has to be reordered and it's not, a, not an inventory, it's a poor customer experience. Uh, work from home wise, we are starting to see um, more interest in collaboration and what kind of the ev evolution of collaboration may or may not look like, right? So if we're gonna be in this work from home or maybe hybrid type work office, um, how do we better enable our employees? How do we ensure that the, the security's in place, um, especially if we're gonna be making this kind of long-term shift? Does that answer your question? Was there an earthquake? I was shaking earlier when I was sitting in the back. I could feel it. So, any other? Awesome. Any other questions? Thanks for sticking with me the first few minutes there. I feel a little more comfortable. Awesome. Thank you.